Mr. S Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, today I'd like to uh, uh, make, uh, make some comments about the tragedy that is unfolding in Afghanistan, and I do so from, from actually from an electorate point of view and the, the view of the people in my electorate. Mr. Speaker, it is no doubt that uh, the tragedy in Afghanistan is a symbol of the failure of Western foreign policy. That, quite simply, we just got it wrong. Uh, we, have, we have other examples like Syria and Iraq. Uh, there are now parallels with Vietnam in terms of the scenes we've seen at Kabul, at Kabul airport. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the visual uh, images we see are reminiscent, as I said, of Vietnam, but also uh, paint a very powerful picture of, our, of a desperate nation who will now be under the control of the Taliban government. In terms of its impact on the local population, we've heard the stories uh, and the fears of the women and, and girls in that community and how they, their democratic rights will be wound back. We've also heard the pleas of minor minority ethnic groups like the Hazara, who've been, who've been persecuted in that country for centuries and continue to do so, and with the Taliban returning, will suffer even more. Mr Speaker, obviously this will lead to a displacement of people and a flow of refugees. And as a world community, we need to do our bit. Mr Speaker, when this was un unfolded in Afghanistan, uh, one area I didn't realise it was going to have an impact was actually on the local scene in terms of the veterans. I recently received an email from a local veteran who we're working with on a project apologising for not responding to my emails. And he said, look, the Afghanistan thing has just been really tough on us. It really has been tough on us. And that he, the, the, whole, the veterans are questioning, was their sacrifice uh, and the sacrifice of their colleagues worthwhile or has it been in vain? And for the Vietnam veterans, it re, uh, what happened for the Vietnam veterans, they relived what happened to them uh, back in Vietnam at the end of the war, similar situation. Thankfully, though, unlike the Vietnam veterans, we understand that our veterans have done their job as our nations asked them. The Vietnam veterans didn't have that courtesy from our nation, and still today, they remember that. Mr Speaker, it is for that reason we have to ensure that the Royal Commission finally announced by the Prime Minister to look into the well-being of our veterans is well-resourced and well-run. It is now more important than ever this Royal Commission isn't established to hide the truth, and not, but is actually designed to open the truth up to make sure that we support our veterans. The rate of suicide amongst our veterans is unacceptable, Mr Speaker. Uh, it is more than 10 times the average uh, rate for, for people in the community. I see it in, only my, in my local veterans who come and speak to me uh, about how they are doing. And this whole Afghanistan matter, sadly, has made it a lot worse. Mr Speaker, I also received uh, emails from South Australians, other South Australians, who actually have married uh, Afghani men and women, and their partners are now stuck in Afghanistan. And they obviously are very concerned about the well-being of their loved ones. And also, for the first time, I received, for, in terms of an overseas conflict, I received emails from what you might call Anglo-Australians, people who are born here of Anglo background, very much concerned about people in Afghanistan. And they've seen the horrors, and it's moved them. And that uh, a lot of South Australians have friends and family in Afghanistan. Mr Speaker, I've also heard from the, the impact on South Australians who have an Afghan heritage uh, and have family and friends of Afghanistan. And they are asking us what we're going to do to assist their family and friends to make sure they're not persecuted or become victims of the Afghanistan, of the Taliban. Mr Speaker, we have, we, have to, we, have, we have the moral obligation to support these people who worked alongside us, to, uh, alongside the so-called Coalition of the Willing, which includes Australia. Mr Speaker, the Hazara community would like the Commonwealth Government to take the following steps to grant immediate permanent protection to Afghans in Australia on temporary visas, particularly Hazara Afghans, 
increase particularly Afghan citizenship and prioritise family reunions to make sure that we actually have, uh, we support our Afghan community. Mr Speaker, this is a time for real leadership and that's doing what's morally right for humanity.